Hey everyone, it's Howard Gearhauser alongside my dad, Dr. Richard Gearhauser. In today's video episode, we wanted to talk about vitamin D. And more specifically, is getting vitamin D from the sun the same thing as taking supplemental vitamin D or prescription grade vitamin D? And this was actually a question that we had from one of our health coaching clients who had just been prescribed vitamin D. So we thought we would share our answers and our insight with all of you guys. So dad, Let's talk about vitamin D. What's the difference between natural vitamin D and then supplemental or prescription vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is uh, something that we can make inside our cells, uh, our inside our body. So it's really not a vitamin because the definition of vitamin is something you can't make. So we can make vitamin D, but we do need something in order to make vitamin D and that's the ultraviolet B light from the sun or from an artificial source. Ultraviolet B light uh, stimulates the conversion of seven dehydrocholesterol uh, with the energy of sunlight is transformed into uh, vitamin D3 and then vitamin D3 is actually a pre pre-vitamin. I mean, it's not really a vitamin, but if you go with the, it's called a vitamin. So it's a pre-vitamin. It needs to be activated and it's activated in the liver and then in the kidney. So it's kind of complex. But if you talk about supplemental vitamin D, there's a couple different forms. There's a vitamin D3. So that's the same thing. The same thing that the sun makes is vitamin D3. Uh, with that action in the skin. The difference is, is vitamin D3 from the sun is sulfated and vitamin D3 in a pill is not sulfated. And that could be important. You know, it's not worked out for sure in science how important that is. But when you, you sulfate a molecule, you make it more charged. When something's more charged, it's more likely to be soluble in water. So vitamin D three is fat soluble and that's what's in the pills but vitamin d3 that we make from the sun is more water soluble so the theory is it can get more places and we can go back to well why is vitamin d so important well early in my career <clears throat> or midway in my career all these epidemiologic studies came out showing that if you had a low vitamin d you're much higher risk for having osteoporosis as one of the first things that came out and then there was kind of like a snowballing of then it was autoimmune disease and there was other uh, prevention against infectious disease. In other words, if you had a good vitamin D level, it protected you from getting autoimmune disease, protected you from getting infectious diseases. Uh, high correlation between vitamin D and heart attacks. So people with low vitamin D we're at much greater risk of a heart attack than people with high vitamin D levels. So that came to the era, I would say, of almost every alternative doc out there, and I'm guilty. I did this for years, but we, you know, we tested patients' vitamin D levels, and they were typically low, and sometimes they were really, really low. One time, I was treating a princess from Saudi Arabia, and her vitamin D level was zero. You know, I had never seen that before. But, you know, she stayed out of the sun completely and obviously wasn't getting other sources of vitamin D, wasn't taking supplements. Um, but if, you know, to kind of complete the story, how we came about realizing that maybe the vitamin D from the sun is different from one, it's chemically different, it has sulfate on it. And then number two, they start doing randomized controlled trials. This is where you give one, you randomly split a group into two or more, and you give one a placebo and you give one, say in this case, vitamin D. Well, they've, they've done, just as an example, they've done lots of these studies, but as an example, there was a re review published last year that looked at 21 randomized controlled trials of treating trying to uh, prevent or treat cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular disease markers. And so 
the conclusion from looking at all 21 trials that were done is there's no benefit, no benefit to cardiovascular disease, no benefit to, mor to mortality risk with taking the pills. And then to go a step further, you mentioned the prescription one. Well, that is vitamin D2. And that is a form of vitamin D that's in plants. And it's been shown that vitamin D2 is not, is even worse than taking D3. It seems D3 doesn't help that much either from the randomized controlled trials, but D3 will raise your blood, blood level better. But D2 uh, poorly addresses a deficient vitamin D level, in my experience. It doesn't seem to help anyone. It's expensive. And it, it gives the doctor a feeling of, oh, I really did something powerful this pa for this patient. Because the typical dose for those is 50,000 international units uh, per dose. And they're usually given you know, once a month or once every two weeks. So 50,000 units, you know, patient goes, wow, my doctor must love me. He gave me 50,000 units of a vitamin. This guy is really progressive. But I would say anybody who orders that 50,000 units of vitamin D2, you should run the other way, in my opinion. So you mentioned the UVB light as being the kind of nat natural mechanism in which we generate vitamin D. And you also alluded to that it's not really a vitamin if we can create it you know, without needing something exogenously. But can you elaborate a little bit more on the UVB for our viewers? When, when can they get UVB light so they can start increasing their vitamin D levels? Okay, well, the UVB story, ultraviolet B is, is something that doesn't penetrate the atmosphere well, so it comes out later in the day. And when the sun is high, like in the summer, like June 21st, the summer solstice when the sun is more directly overhead here in the Northern hemisphere, uh, that's when the window is the widest. It could be like here in Tucson, it could be 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You get vitamin D of that whole window. But in the dead of winter, here at the 32nd latitude, we still get vitamin D even on the shortest day of the year, which is December 21st. We still get vitamin D, but for a narrow window, of about two hours from like 11 to one. Now, if you live north of the 34th parallel, I think that's um, somewhere around like the Four Corners region uh, in the United States, anywhere north of that, we'll have a period of time in the winter where no UVB gets through from let's say uh, November 21st through January 21st for those two months. You know, and that's different. The further north you go, if you go to the Arctic Circle, it's, it can be over six months that you don't get it. So it varies, but uh, say at the Canadian US border, it, it's, you know, several months long where you cannot get any UVB because it doesn't penetrate when the sun's at an angle. When the sun's at an angle, the photons have to go through more atmosphere because if it's coming straight down, it's like this, but if it's coming at an angle, it has to trans transfer through the atmosphere much more and it gets filtered out. Now, one way you can mitigate that is to go to a uh, high elevation because then you have less atmosphere interfering. So going to high elevation uh, can improvement, improve that moving south or taking a vacation to a more equatorial place can give you a boost in the winter. A lot of people can get through like that. And then the other way is to get it from food. You know, there is vitamin D in food sources, especially the fatty fish. Uh, egg yolks uh, have some vitamin D as well. And of course they have vitamin D enriched milk, but that's the same as taking the supplement because it, they're squirting a vitamin in there which probably, according to the mainstream medicine's research of trial after trial after trial, now maybe, you know, maybe they, they are uh, giving us 
the wrong information, that they've rigged these studies so they come out negative. So we have to take drugs instead of vitamins. You know, I don't believe that's true, but you know, that's always a possibility. You can't trust research too far. You know, I would rather you trust nature's mechanism. So we know the mechanism of what activ activates the cholesterol molecule to allow it to become vitamin D3. We know the mechanism, that's nature. Nature did that. So if we just go, hey, how does nature do it? You're much more likely to go right. So that means getting outside. There's an app called the D-Minder and it will tell you at your location, you know, it looks at your GPS location and at your location, it'll tell you, hey, uh, UVB starts coming through at 9.15 and it stops coming through at 4.15 or, you know, whatever. So you can get the exact time. Now, there are mitigating factors, though. If you live in a big city, like some of the uh, big cities in China, where they have uh, bad air pol pollution and other cities that have really bad air pollution, you can't get any vitamin D during a typical polluted day because the pollution acts like extra atmosphere or extra filter and filters out the vitamin D. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we see these viruses. Remember, vitamin D helps your immune system. We see these viruses hit harder in the big cities that have air pollution. Yeah, and if you're someone who's dealing with low vitamin D levels and you also have a corresponding chronic condition, you have to take this very seriously. If you're living in a city or if you're living in a northern latitude, you might want to consider moving south during the winter or even full time, you know, go move down to Florida or Arizona. I know there's a lot of snowbirds that do that. And that's really important for your health. That's the type of sacrifice you need to make if you're dealing with disease. Because if you continue to live without good vitamin D levels and get it naturally from the sun, you know, things aren't going to magically get better. And the jury's out on the supplements and it looks like the prescription drug isn't even the same vitamin. So, you know, this is how you do it, but it does take effort. It does take sacrifice in order to get these levels adjusted. Anything you want to add to that, Dad? Yeah, I'd say a vitamin D is good. An artificial way to get it is to buy a, UV, a UVB light. And so they make those. The Spurt T has a vitamin D light. They also have a tanning light, which has UVA and UVB. Uh, that's what I got my mom who lives pretty far north uh, to help her get through the winters and it's helped her a lot. Yep. So those are some artificial ways if you can't make the move or, you know, just to have that light within your home, <clears throat> excuse me, have that light within your home, you know, a great biohack to do for sure if you're low in vitamin D. So we went pretty long on this one. Make sure to go check out our protocol on sun exposure because that'll teach you how to get vitamin D safely from the sun. We don't want you to get burnt or have skin damage. So go check that one out. We'll see you guys on the next video.